Welcome back to Samsung Games, the place to find new strategy games and today I have a very unique game for you. It's called Coffee Noir, the business detective game. And it's such a unique combination of genre. It's essentially a visual novel. It's focusing on, you know, like investigation and being a detective plus a business game where you're handling a coffee production game and i have to say it's a it's so unique and it's quite unusual and this is currently a demo so the game is not out into full release yet and i have to say it's a very detailed demo like the business part of the game is a very detailed and very well done which is you know like when it's a demo you sometimes expect things to like not feel finished and things like that and this feels very much like a in polished demo it's 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 great it's, it's amazing so let's start a brand new game, so I can walk you through it. At the beginning of the 20th century, for unexplained reason, world's coffee consumption increased 20 times. The phenomenon called coffee mania reached its peak in the 1940s. The world of 2021 is ruled by coffee, and Neo-London goes crazy for it. They say that in this job, only two cases matter. The one that breaks you, and the one that makes you. Makes you a real cop. I'm Arthur Oliver, and I'm a private investigator. But I used to be a cop here in Neo London. I quit 10 years ago. I failed. I hoped I'd never come back here. I read about Richard Kersey's disappearance in the papers on a train journey. Coffee Tycoon Vanishes, the front page headline of the Neo-London Espresso screamed. For many, Kersey was a wealthy celebrity buffoon, pure envy. They lost contracts and profits to him. They even lost their reputations as he dragged competitors through the courts. And me? I lost a lot more to him. Catherine, my beloved, and his wife. Ten years ago, Richard was involved in a spot of bother. He had a debt. Unfortunately for him, it was Kath who received the demands for payment. Kersey happened to be abroad at the time, totally out of reach. She got scared and tried sorting it out herself, in cash. She asked me for help. I couldn't do it in my official capacity, but I took my gun and set up a sting. It ended tragically. A few days ago, Henry called Richard's older brother. He sounded down, just like me. I know all about it, Arthur. You quit the force. You're still tormented by Kath's murder. Listen, Richard's daughter doesn't have to know anything about you two, nor Richard, but I'm begging you, help me find him. I'll give you a flat to live in, some cash and cover story that you're a salesman. Just come, please. So I'm in Neo London again business with Catherine broke me. So maybe the case with Richard will be the one to make me a real cop again. Richard's disappearance was big news. There was speculation about mafia involvement, either Italian or Yakuza. I think there might be something in that. Little Clarabelle, Richard and Kath's daughter. The last time I saw her was at her mother's funeral. I wanted to comfort her. Now it looks like it's her who wants to comfort me. She's so like her mother, especially in her eyes. I can't forget watching the life draining out of Catherine's eyes. On the way to the hotel, Clarabelle told me her father might have been kidnapped by an angry competitor. It's a possibility. Kersey did all sorts of weird deals with even weirder people. Maybe one of them had enough of Richard's caprices. Over the phone, Clarabelle confirmed what Henry had promised. There was a flat and a position as a salesperson in their family business. That was to make investigating easier. Fair enough. Let it be. If that's what the investigation demands, I'll become the best damn salesperson in Neo-London. I'll help.
help Clarabelle with her business. I'll find Richard. I'll find your killer, Kath. I won't let you down twice. Promise. He damn well see know that have such a good like voiceover and everything and it's just so polished and so I'm so excited for the full release of this guy. I think it's gonna be amazing. And you can see how the story kind of already ma ma marries the two genres which is really really cool as well. I think it's such an interesting idea. Like you wouldn't think about like combining a visual novel and detectivism with coffee management game. But it just kind of works. It's, it's so interesting. Dear Arthur, thank you again for agreeing to work on this case in such unusual circumstances. As I mentioned during our last meeting, Uncle Henry and I suspect that one of my father's business partners must be involved in his disappearance, or at least know something about it. We believe it would be best to work undercover and meet them offering a delivery contract. It's also better that a private investigation will remain as a secret. All right, we're going to skip ahead a little bit. So this is the kind of business management part of the game. So I'm going to walk you through this a little bit. So first up here we have production. So we want to set up how much we want to produce. And we start off by making coffee brand classic. But later on we're going to be able to make different types of coffee that you have to deliver to the coffee shops and etc where they then proceed to sell them here you could get some specific uh productions upgrades but we are not quite ready for that yet we're very early in the beginning so all we want to do right now is make 20 coffee brand classic so that we have it ready in stock in order to actually get this thing going you have to jump to the management where you have your employees so we've got a list of employees over here you have bernadette bob brand and danica as you can clearly see if your name starts at a b you're getting you have a much better chance of being hired. <laughs> Danica is like especially good. That's why she got the job. Everybody else is like, your name starts with the V, let's go. And here you can see the area that they're especially good at. So for example, Bernadette is really good at production management and Danica is fantastic with staff training. Oh, sorry, with project management. So we're going to take Bernadette here and we're going to put her into production management. Here you can set up how many hours you want her to work. So this is going to make sure uh, affect the failure risk. So this is like the chance that you failed at this. So if I increase this, you're going to see that if I tell her to work 20 hours, the chance of risk is only 1%. So it's going to be okay. However, if you make them overworked, then they will obviously not be happy and you'll have to pay them overtime. So something to keep in mind. So that's all we are going to do for right now. Next thing we'll want to do is we want to jump here to sales, where we are going to take a meeting with Claribor. Now this is sort of like a preparation meeting just with Claribor. So this is going to, the game is going to teach us about negotiation tactics. Unfortunately, you can't skip it. I would walk you through it with an actual negotiation, but we can't. So this is going to be the negotiations we're going to do for the video but remember this is a demo so that's fine later on once you have actual clients what you're going to be able to do here is going to be able to learn more about them so you're going to be able to send essentially investigators to learn what the people uh, like or dislike and this is very important in negotiations because you might have people who prefer honesty so you want to start a negotiation by you know being more like honest about things and there are people who prefer compliments so you want to start an investigation by complimenting the coffee shop or wherever you're doing the investigation things like that here you can see your finances, so you can see how much money you make. This is not particularly inter interesting right now, but once you start making the production, it's going to be interesting. You can also take loans, look at the finance charts, and etc. And here we've got our investigation board. So here we have our clues. Currently we found 0 out of 4 clues. Alright, and here we have our characters. So we have a new character. A bunch of characters, actually. We've got Clarabelle, Arthur, Richard, Catherine, Henry, Kate's murder, and Richard's kidnapper. Yeah, so we can click on Arthur, for example, and learn a little bit about him. What we know or don't know. Then we can have here, here have some connections that we could again connect it up. So obviously we know, we know that Catherine is connected to Richard. And we, there was this call, phone call apparently. We need you, Arthur. Richard's missing. Alright. And we can zoom in now if you wanted to. And obviously as we find these new characters in connection, we'll have new dialogue options and new story options. So right now, we're just gonna move, to, actually we're gonna go to sales and we're gonna go for the meeting with Clarabelle so that we can meet, move further in the story. Okay. 
So we can start off by introducing ourselves and complimenting on the cafe's decor, or we can just ask for a coffee, piece of cakes, and get down straight to business. So obviously, this will depend on the type of person she is. We're going to introduce Hello, ourselves. Clarabelle. The cafe looks great, really bright, cozy, homely. Hello. Um, thanks. The decor was my father's work. He was very careful to create a friendly atmosphere. P please don't call me miss. Sorry, it, it's your hairstyle. You look so young, I couldn't help myself. But fine. First names only. Great. Let's get down to business. I want to ask about your childhood. I know there are painful memories, but it's important for the case. All right. I've had time to get some distance on it. How can I help? Tell me, how you coped after your mother's death? Well, not too well. Dad hated talking about it. He worked a lot, went away a lot. And me? I remember lying there, crying. Mr. Pensy was with me. He took my temperature, brought me cups of tea. I was alone. Any friends? School psychologist? I had this one friend, Amy. She came to cheer me up a couple of times, but I think I wore her out. I was incredibly shy as a child. The school psychologist sent me to a psychiatrist for medication. I was supposed to go there with an adult, but it never happened. Why? Something changed. Something got better? Yeah, you could say it was thanks to Mr. Van Haven. Hold on, I'll write this down. Who was it? Joseph Van Haven, Dad's friend from college. He and his wife Amanda offered to take care of me, together with his housekeeper. I was to sleep at my home, spend the day with them, mainly with Mrs. Fink, the housekeeper. Dad immediately agreed. Could they be important to the investigation? We don't know. And you? Did you have any say in it? I was a bit scared at first, but they were really nice. They were like my family. They still are. Thanks, Clarabelle. That's a lot of help. Can you give me a contact number for Van Haven and Fink? I'd like to ask them a few questions. Sure, here you go. Great. Who do you think I should meet first? Mr. Van Haven. Visit him posing as a sales rep. Sell him some coffee. He's a really nice guy and a good candidate for checking your abilities. All right, Mr. Haven it is. Investigative abilities. Business and negotiating. Remember that you operate undercover and you must be credible. Only then will investigative skills come in handy. I love that she's telling us how we should do our job. Like, come on, girl. You are a coffee shop owner. I am the investigator. I know how to do it. All right, but and essentially we can ask her more about the investigation, but we're actually going to go straight into the negotiations because that's what she's supposed to teach us. So we're just going to say, I know everything and let's keep I going. I know everything now. Yes, we have to practice contract negotiating. Yeah, we're going to role play. Yeah, 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 let's go. Couldn't be readier. All right, so let's start negotiating straight into it. I think it. I'm ready. Let's try a negotiation and point out anything I get wrong. And when I recover from that, you can give me some more tips. Okay, let's begin negotiating. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll start by giving a compliment about the air mine the cafe, let's say. Good morning. Is that coffee cake? Mmm, that smells good enough to stop traffic. Really? Thanks for saying so. We just finished baking it. Here it is. Now this changes your attitude to me, which is going to help me with negotiations later. Wow, it looks better than it smells. Did you make this, Miss Clarabelle Kersey, I presume? I've come to talk to you about coffee supplies. Not bad, Arthur. A well-judged compliment can work wonders, but some clients don't like them. Yeah, we already walked. Uh, I already walked you through this. Yes, I knew you liked baking cakes, so I could mention it. But it's only a small thing from your. Precisely, everything can be useful during negotiations. Okay. 
Can we move on to establishing the terms of the agreement? What does a contract like this look like? Here's a standard contract. Here, look. All right, so this is the contract forms. Of so first of all, we see the vendor and the client. Then we can set up the product and the price. This is the most important part because you can here see the sales emerging. Now this um, text here, normal, easy, it's telling you how likely they are to accept. So we're going to go into hard and they will uh, typically, even if you give them this option, they're going to lower the price immediately through the negotiation. So we want to go a little bit harder than you're willing to accept. So we're going to try to go with 60% margin. They're going to take us down and we'll see. So try to make an offer. You don't want to go too hard because they'll just straight up refuse it, but we'll try. Good. That looks acceptable. Be prepared that the client will want to renegotiate the terms here. Assume that they're going to ask for a price lower by this percentage. How are you going to persuade me your offer is already attractive enough? So actually, the new offer she's giving us is still pretty good for us. We have 53% margin, but we can go for a specific tactics. For example, we could try to use the emphasize the low unit cost per pack of coffee. Look at the unit cost, though. It's already ridiculously low. For an initial contract, the terms are really excellent. Using this technique is a good idea. Avoid using words like ridiculous, though. You'll often have to calculate exactly what you can concede, or what else you can do to close the deal and still make money. Alright, very happy. Let will mention the product's quality and move on. Let's look at the price in relation to quality. Everything about our coffee's top drawer. Taste, aroma, and certification. Coffee like that at a price like this is a real bargain. Let's assume I will agree for such discount. Every supply claims his or her coffee is the best. How are you going to support your claims so they don't come across like empty boasts? Hmm, some facts and figures to prove that this discount is a sensible bargain. There you go, Arthur. That's how you support your credibility and generate client trust. But it would be better if you actually knew some data. For a first go at negotiating, that went pretty well. Let's say I'll sign the contract, but I have one more proposal. The first month's batch for lower price. Agreed? Yeah, we guys just gonna say yes, but uh, we could also disagree or alter the contract or reveal the tactic, etc. But we're just gonna agree. Okay, it's a reasonably big order, so I guess we can do that. The client is sure to be happy, but does it still pay for you? Conceding too easily to surprise conditions can cost you a lot. Okay, you've got me there. I'll remember that. I think that covers everything. Now it's time to put it into practice, both as a business person and a negotiator. Make sure you swat up on the materials and look at this week's tasks. All right. Thank you. I'm sure it will all prove helpful in this investigation and in finding your father. See you soon, Clarabelle. Thanks, Arthur. It means a lot to me. Now it's up to you, and I think you're the last hope I've got. Don't worry, I've got you covered. So we're going to sign this. We can still refuse it here and come back to the client later if we wanted to, but we're obviously just going to agree. So it's still a test term, so it doesn't matter all that much. All right, because one week passed, we've actually already been able to get some coffee in stock. Also signed the new contract, so the amount of £7,744 will be regularly transferred to our year account within the next 10 weeks. And we've got a new part of the story here on the bottom. So first thing we want to do, so we want to go here to sales and we want to deliver the 16 bags of coffee that we have to deliver every week. So we're going to do that immediately. So this is send. We still have four in stock. I'm also going to make sure that I'm making some more. Actually, sorry, not here, but in the production. Yeah, we, we have it still set up to make more. Now here in the investigation, we got some new characters. So we can click on them and kind of learn what we know about them, etc. We could read about, we know about Richard's kidnapper and so on. Didn't seem to have like, um, is there one Haven here yet? But I guess we have to wait till we actually meet him with the case files. Next, 
Here in the sales table, we can see how much we sold and what are the coffee brands that we're interested in, how much profit we're making, etc. And some demands and charts. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to click this. Next, we're going to go back to management. And here we have post sale account management. So we have to manage the contract. So we're going to send Bob Holmey here because he is really good at this. And we're going to tell him to work 42 hours. Oh, can we do more? We do 40. Actually, let's just do 42 hours, but they still have a moderate risk of failure. So we're actually going to send Brand Matthews here to work at the premium services. And now the risk of failure is pretty low and the people should be very happy because we're taking care of them very much. Here in HR, we could try to find a new person. So we could hire someone who is good at production management. We have someone post silicon management. Lead acquisition due diligence also have someone for that. Project management. Production management? Actually, I'm not sure if you even have someone for this. So let's just hire him. Oh, unavailable in the demo. Okay, okay. Apologize for that. Yeah, so here in the quest, you can see our goal. For example, they want us to start a brand new production espresso standard. But in order to do that, you actually have to have a client that would like to buy this type of coffee. So we can't do espresso just yet. But the next thing we got to do is we actually got to keep moving to the story. If we try to move to the next week, it's going to tell us, hey, continue with the story. So we'll jump here to family house. Someone important lives here. That's what the Kersey home seemed to be saying. This is where the investigation begins. Walking in, Clarabelle hugged herself. From the cold, cute. Clarabelle only slept here, though. After her mother's death, she was taken in by Joseph Van Haven, her father's friend who treated her like his own daughter. His wife tried. Mostly, though, she left her to the housekeeper, Mrs. Fink. Why did the Van Havens raise the Kersey kid? A friendly favor? Guilt. It is unusual. A servant greeted Clarabelle with a stack of unopened letters. She stuffed them into her bag and went inside. A lot to catch up, I joked. And Clarabelle explained that she no longer lives in the residence with her beloved. I asked for a family photo of the Curses. There was an exotic looking guy in the midst of a sea of pale grits. Mr. Gabriel was an artist who taught Clarabelle to draw. He looked pretty stiff probably trying to avoid her dreamy eyes. <laughs> In the living room, among many works of art, a spot after a taken down painting draw my attention. It was a peculiar view. Clarabelle told me the painting belonged to her mother. One day, Richard simply packed it up and took it to Joseph. Did he want to sell it? Hide it. I didn't get a chance to ask. Clarabelle answered an urgent call and apologizing left in a hurry. I went to gather my thoughts. Catherine's death, Richard's disappearance, the unusual arrangements with the Van Havens, that picture. Clarabelle was right. A detective was needed here. But I have my own reason for this to get Catherine's killer. All in good time. The last lead is Richard's disappearance. Perhaps the best known coffee supplier in London. I'll start by entering into his world. That means turning into a businessman. My first customer will be Richard's old friend and Clarabelle's ward, Joseph Van Haven. Clarabelle gave me his address and phone number. He's an old, experienced trader. I'd better prepare thoroughly. All right, so before we meet him, we should do some investigations about him. And essentially send out people to learn about what he likes, what he dislikes, and kind of help us figure out the negotiations there. 
New clues, okay. So let's do clues first. I noticed a file of letters sticking out from Clarabelle's purse. A lot to catch up. I joked in Clarabelle explained. Yeah, so we already read this, so we can connect this with... Ooh. So if we had more clues, we could connect it with them, but because we don't... Yeah, so we don't actually have anything to connect it with, because we have no other clues except this one. But... We can see a connection here. Yeah, but the idea is that we would essentially click and match this, but... Yeah. If we only have one clue, it doesn't quite work out. Alright, so what we want to do is we want to go into sales and we want to go here to click on Joseph Van Haven. And we can try to learn information about him. Which we do by going to management, I believe? Yes. We can set up a business meeting. We don't want to do that just yet. Instead, we want to find out information about a client. So we send um, Brand here. Now, notice that Brand is now in two different jobs. Uh, both of them, he works only 20 hours a week, so it's actually fine. But you gotta, again, work out for not overworking him. Watch out for not overworking him. I don't want to set up a business meeting just yet. I think we're kind of okay the way we are. Now, could we start working on this? Yes, we could. So we're gonna upgrade for 1,900 pounds so that we can start working on the special standard. And we'll start working on a few and we'll set somebody to do it here in the management now we don't actually need that much of it just yet but it's it's gonna be ready when he signs the deal so let's wait one week okay we haven't assigned work to some of the employees uh okay i mean i guess okay i guess we'll set up the meeting immediately as well oh she's way overworked they work a bit less over here Moderate risk of failure, we'll try. Hope we get the information before the meeting. Alright. Okay, so far total revenue value amounted to £7,744. We failed as per some, yeah, we had a pretty high chance of failure, 18%. So it cost us £3,000 to get this done. And we failed. And we found some information about Joseph Van Haven. So if we click on him here, we can now read about his daughter's birth. So we know a little bit about his daughter's birth. So this should give us options in the invest in the meeting to actually like use that in the negotiations, I presume. Let's try to find out even more info about him before we before we actually do it. Kinda wanna try this. And we'll try to get a bit more of these, <laughs> these uh, espresso brand coffee. Alright, so let's set this to 17. Okay, warehouse capacity. Okay, so we can only do 6 because we don't have space. But that's okay because we can just deliver another set of 16 to Clarabelle. So now we should be able to set this up again. Yeah. One more week and then we'll do the meeting. Because I want to have as much information about him as I possibly can. Alright, let's do a meeting. Alright, we made some money. Brand Matthews is tired and less motivated because he has higher workload. And the warehouse is almost full. That's fine. Let's first of all deliver to Clarabelle and then go for a meeting to, with Joseph Fun Haven. I, I didn't read what that information was, but it should be fine. Introduce yourself and explain where you got the contact information from. Sure. Good morning, Mr. Van Haven. Arthur Oliver. I'd like to talk to you about our coffees. Clarabelle Kersey recommended I speak to you. She said she knows you well. Uh. Sorry, I clicked that too fast so he's not going to do his voiceover. Welcome, welcome. Naturally, I was expecting you after Clary phoned. Sweet girl, isn't she? Lovely. Actually, really lovely, considering what she's been through at such a young age. The stuff about her parents. It's true, isn't it? Sadly, yes. A terrible, brutal thing for such a child. You see, her parents were friends of mine. After Catherine died and Richard usually been absent, my wife and I did all we can to provide a normal upbringing for her. You've seen yourself how, despite all this, Miss Kersey is doing very well. Oh, yes, and she's a tough negotiator. <laughs> I taught her well. 
She could always get you to read for one more hour, go for one more walk, or give her a bigger portion. It comes in very useful as an adult, but you don't have all day to listen about the young cursy girl. <laughs> Let's take a look at what you brought with you. I can't wait to see. Nice photo. From your student days? Ha ha ha, yes. Being young is wonderful when the world is your oyster. You speak as if it's over. What? You mean I don't look like it? <laughs> you are a card, Mr. Oliver. Well, I do try to move a bit so as to not become totally desk bound. He has to like us even though the customer attitude is not changing. Yeah. It shows. And the man next to you, isn't that Richard Kersey? The very same. He was my best friend at university and since. And these are our charming wives. Actually, our fiancés then. Catherine Seeger and Amanda Okote. You look a close bunch. We were, then, but life writes strange scenarios. The best of friends can fall out over the silliest things, and other people are worth forgetting. Yeah, I guess you're right. I keep the picture to remember the good times. Let's return to the here and now. Mr. Oliver, things are looking up. Oh, let's try to congratulate him on the birth of his daughter. Congratulations on the birth of your daughter. I hope both the mother and baby are doing well. Ah, thank you, thank you. Both in good health and so similar. I tell you, they look like sisters. It's amazing how a person passes on their genes and then watches as they live their own life. It seems you're enjoying your new role. Not at first, but it's getting better and better. Despite my super condition, <laughs> I'm not as young as I was, and the little one demands so much attention, just like our business. Let's get down to it, shall we? Yeah, I think we got to get down to it. We've been delaying long enough. Let's get to business. Let's go. Oh, man, I should have read the description. Man. Let's go loosely. See, well, actually, now let's do professional. Now let's do it loosely. We're new on the market, but we have a lot of experience in the field. We have a unique variety of coffee, trusted suppliers, and top quality equipment. We offer excellent quality at a good price. Miss Clarabelle has already dealt with us, and she's sure not to sell you a pup. That's great. Quality is my top priority, and that's what I taught Clarabelle, so... <laughs> It's a recommendation of sorts. And if we're talking about quality, my wife bought me a cigar not long ago. Came in a carved wooden box, well-known brand, and the aroma, aromatic tobacco, like from the top drawer. That worked well. Like, like it got chucked in there by accident? Precisely, it was filthy. After smoking it, I felt so nauseous, I spat it into the bin. I opened all the office windows and even had to use air freshener. So, it's best if we both assess the quality. It's hard to find these days. No problem. I used to be interested in the effect of different cultures on negotiations. In Japan, there is a need for distance. Don't even dare to look someone in the eye. It's even harder with the Swedes. They're so serious. Oh, this is a good one. Do you know the difference between an introvert Finn and an extrovert one? No. I really have no idea. The first, throughout the whole conversation, looks at his shoes. The second looks at yours. <laughs> It's a good one, isn't it? I actually know the same joke except instead of for fans, it's done for computer programmers. <laughs> Which I find funny because, you know, I know programming, so. Alright, uh, let's, uh... Come on, Joseph's jokes. Nah, let's return to the sale of this bitch. He already likes us. Van Haven. Can we return to business? Oh, that was a bit rough. Naturally, time is money. I keep forgetting, and everyone's in such a rush these days. No one has any time for anything outside business. 
Pity. Oh, yeah, we shouldn't have done that. I thought he was going to be a bit softer about this, but it's okay. Now, I'm going to set this up to, I think, hard. Even though he's going to probably cut us down, we're going to try it this way. Maybe let's do just barely. Your proposal exceeds my current capabilities. I suggest we cut the delivery charges or just lower the product cost to compensate them. The price on the contract will then be lower by this percentage. That's a sensible concession, and I really can't offer any more than that. Still 34% sales margin, so that's pretty good. Suggest that Joseph is only one of several potential clients, which is a lie. Pretend you don't know much about negotiation to gain sympathy. Use the complimenting technique. Talk about the problems of beginner salesperson. Mention, mention Joseph's suits. Use the technique. Let's try to do the gain sympathy. We'll see if that works. That's a large concession, I admit. I'm a bit new to this. I'm only starting out in business, so your understanding is really valuable to me. Is it normal to ask for such large concessions? You have a lot more experience than me, so I need your help. Let me tell you what my method is. Please just relax. You're very open, which encourages trust. Maybe I was asking a bit too much. Please tell me about the deal. Once I'm familiar with it, it'll be easier for us to reach a compromise. That worked. Yeah, we're just going to emphasize the attractiveness of our deal and just move on. We grind the coffee to your specifications using ultra-modern coffee grinders. Our packaging ensures the aroma lasts. You get all that at a very reasonable price. For similar quality, you'll pay much more anywhere else. I've heard people talk about quality so many times. Very few were genuine. This discount may be a bit much, but I'd like to get close to it. What are your thoughts? Let's do offer future benefits in return for concessions now. I can't offer you any more at the moment, Mr. Van Haven. In future, I could offer to cut the price by that much. Along with larger orders, that could be worth a whole lot more than now. Sounds okay, but it's still not enough. Perhaps you'd agree to a small reduction in the charges. Say, by this percentage? That would be enough for me and you gain a satisfied customer. It's a win-win, okay? Mm-hmm, yes. You have 45% sales margin, that's great. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I can accept that. Let's do it. I hope our future collaboration will be as effective as today's talk. Okay, I agree. You worked me hard, but I think the prospects for collaboration look interesting. Let's sum up what we've established and sign the forms. So that actually seem to say on the form that the future negotiations is going to be at a better price. Maybe it means that the next time when we meet him, the like customer quality or the customer relationship to us is going to be lowered. Maybe that's... I, I'm curious how is that going to show up in the future negotiations. That's something that I would love to, for example, see because it, it's not obvious from this. All right, and we're way over time, so I think this is actually a good time to end the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, write down in the comments, and you can click on the right to watch some other games we play on this channel. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.